What's up guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. I'm Katie and on today's video, we're going to be doing my end of 2023 net worth update. So I haven't done a net worth video in quite some time. I used to do them every single month, but I stopped doing them because I felt like there wasn't much change from month to month and they were honestly getting kind of boring. So I decided that we would do them each quarter now going forward so that we can see a little bit more change from video to video and that might be a little bit more exciting. So I do still track my net worth from month to month just because I like to see the progress each month, but I'm just gonna make a video each quarter. I hope that's fine with you guys. So if you do not know anything about net worth, basically the way that you track it is you add up all of your assets. Those are the things that you own that have value. So this could be a house, a rental property, investment accounts, retirement accounts, um, the cash that you have sitting in your checking account or under your mattress or whatever. So you add up all of your assets and then you add up all of your liabilities. So your liabilities are your debts. And then you subtract your total number of liabilities from your total number of assets, and that number gives you your net worth. So different people have different opinions on what should be counted and what shouldn't be counted, especially with assets. Like for example, I count our vehicles. Some people don't agree with that. So if you are just starting out with net worth tracking, you do it how you feel comfortable doing it. I count our vehicles because I have always done that and I use net worth tracking as a way to measure progress over time. So I like to be consistent with the way that I do it because if I'm not consistent, the changes don't really mean anything. So if I am consistent and I always count the same things every time, then that means I can see an accurate change. So if you're brand new to net worth tracking, I would just say whatever you decide to do, kind of keep doing that. So I don't do things like collectibles, jewelry, stuff like that. I know some people do. So it's just really up to you with what you're comfortable with and your net worth really doesn't mean anything to anyone but you. Well, in some cases it does, but for the most part, you're just doing it to track progress over time to see how your net worth has changed or that's how it should be used. So don't get too fussed about like the minor details. I know some people get caught up in that. So if you want to count your vehicles, count your vehicles. If you don't want to count your vehicles, don't count your vehicles. So um, I will have a tracker in the description box below where you can just plug in your numbers and make it really simple so you can get your net worth that way so you don't have to do all of the math yourself. But I like to use a spreadsheet for mine. So let's go ahead and go over to that spreadsheet so you can see our numbers for quarter four of 2023. So this spreadsheet is very simple. I just have our assets listed and our liabilities listed. We're gonna start with the assets right now. So the first one that I have is my retirement account. So I used to clump both of our retirement accounts together. I would still put the total, so it doesn't really matter. But I thought now it would be fun to separate it because I am investing in a IRA for myself for 2024. And I would like to see how my retirement balances grow compared to where they were before now that I am investing again. So I have a total of $45,481 in my retirement accounts. For Mark's retirement account, he has $214,615. So quite a bit more than me, but he um, has been investing over the past five years that I have not been because I've stayed home with my boys. And I didn't realize until very recently that stay-at-home parents can invest for retirement still. So if you're a stay-at-home parent watching this and you didn't know that, you can invest for retirement even if you are not working and don't have your own income. Well, you are working, but you know what I mean. You don't have a paycheck and an income. So look into that if you are not investing for retirement and you're a stay-at-home parent, because I do think it's very important and I wish I had known sooner so I could have been doing it all along. But because he's been investing for you know 10 years straight, he has more money and then he also makes more than I made when I worked. So it makes sense that he has more. So he has $214,615. And then for our brokerage account, this is just kind of like after-tax investing that we do for fun and we don't take it too seriously. Um, I probably take it more seriously than I should sometimes, but it's it's just fun to do. So we have $3,910 in our brokerage account. And then for our savings and checking, this is just our emergency fund and then our sinking funds. We have $14,191. Then for our HSA accounts, we have $3,526. For our Highlander, so this is the car that we just bought and this one was a little hard to determine how much it was worth. I tried to use Kelly Blue Book, but because the VIN number is so new, Kelly Blue Book didn't even have um, an amount to give me for this. So what I ended up doing is I searched a 2023 
Toyota Highlander that was basically everything that we have on ours. It was just a 2023 instead of a 2024. And I put in the mileage that ours has. So ours might actually be worth slightly more than this because it is a year newer, but this was kind of the best I could do right now. Um, I might be able to update this again next quarter. Um, and it might be a little bit more accurate, but we'll see. It's again, just a way to track progress over time. So it's not a huge deal if it's off, but I'm, I'm fine with doing 38,000 for that right now. And then our last asset that we have is our house value. So I have this at 600,000. We have not yet received the letter that we get from the county every year for our tax assessment. We get one every year. You know, most people do if they own a house telling you what, you know, what your house is worth and how much your taxes are. So we haven't received that letter yet, but I am comfortable with this number and I think it's probably a pretty solid number because I do keep an eye on Zillow and Redfin. Both of those have this number as higher than 600. And then I also track, um, this makes me sound creepy, but I pay attention to people in our neighborhood who are selling their house and how much their home sell for. And there was actually someone who recently sold their house that had the exact same layout as ours, the same square footage in the main house, but they actually didn't have a basement and we do and our yard or our lot was bigger than theirs and they sold their house for more than $600. So, or $600,000. They definitely sold it for more than 600. <laughs> So they sold it for more than 600,000. So I feel like 600,000 is a safe number for us to use. Once I get that letter from the county tax assessor, then I can update this and feel even better about it. But right now I feel like 600 is solid. So that's all of our assets. So our total value of our assets is $919,723, which is pretty cool. It was definitely not that when we started tracking our net worth. So it's fun to watch that grow over time. And I'll be super excited when that hits 1 million. So now we'll go to our liabilities. So our first liability is SoFi. So this is a loan that my husband used to refinance some of his other federal student loans. So he owes a total of $61,851 on that. And then he has FedLoan 5, which is two or $22,109. FedLoan 4 is $18,329. And then we have our Highlander. So I have that as $43,587. I still have not received the actual paperwork from the loan company because our first payment isn't due until March. So I should be receiving that soon and then I can update this because I'm sure it's slightly higher now with interest added. And then for our mortgage, we owed $340,297. And that is all of our liabilities. So we only have five liabilities now, which is pretty cool. Um, we did add on the Highlander at the end of the year, so that's a new one for us. But um, in total, our liabilities are $486,173. So the Highlander did make our liabilities go up, but we're still under $500,000, which makes me pretty happy. So again, to get your total net worth, you subtract this number, the total liabilities, from this number, the total assets. So our total net worth is $433,550 which is pretty cool. That's the highest it has been since I started tracking net worth on this channel, or actually that's the highest that it's been ever. Um, yeah, that's the highest that it's been ever. So that's really cool because um, I feel like it changed a lot in 2023. So now we're gonna go over to my other spreadsheet that I have where I track it quarterly so you can see how it changed throughout this year. I'm sorry if you keep hearing a squeaking sound. I feel like my chair is very squeaky today. So if you're hearing a squeaky sound and you're like, what is that? That is what that is. So on this spreadsheet, I have all of the 2022 numbers here, which I'm not gonna go through all of those because I've done that in past videos. I just leave it up here so that I can remind myself how far we've come um, since I started this channel basically. But this is what we really wanna look at right now is 2023. So we ended 2022 or started 2023 with a net worth of $253,561. So then you can see here how that changed in each quarter. We have our assets here, our liabilities here. So, and then at the end here, we have our year change. So we had a huge change in net worth this year in total. And most of this is due to our house value going up so much and also the stock market doing better this year. I feel like the stock market was not great in 2022. If we go back up here, our assets in 2022 actually dropped by $571. And that was with us investing the entire year. 
So the stock market was just kind of a roller coaster in 2022. It felt like it was like up and down and up and down and mostly down. <laughs> But in 2023, I feel like it's been on an upward trend, which has helped us a lot. And then again, our house value went up. So that helped as well. So we had a asset increase of $188,222 this year in a liability increase, not decrease, of $8,233. So I don't like to see our liabilities going up. I obviously want to see them going down because that means we are paying off debt. And we did pay off a lot of debt this year, but we did add on that car loan for the Highlander. So unfortunately our total debt for this year did go up, but actually I'm not too upset about how much it went up. It only went up $8,233 with us buying a, you know, 40 something thousand dollar car. So I feel like that's actually pretty good. And I think next year, hopefully we'll see some bigger decreases in our liabilities. So overall, I'm super happy that we had such a big change. We had a change of $179,989 in our total net worth from the start of 2023 to the end of 23. And I feel like with adding so much debt with the new car purchase, that is really, really cool that we were able to increase our net worth so much. Now, I don't wanna give us too much credit for that because you know we did save money this year, we did invest money this year, but a big part of our change was because the stock market was going up and because the house value or the housing market was going up. So. I can't take credit for everything. It's so cool to see that increase, but you know, it could easily swing the other way in 2024. Like the stock market could go back down, the housing market could drop a little bit. You just never know what's gonna happen. So I love to track net worth. I love to see progress over time, but you can't get too invested in the numbers, especially the parts of it that you don't have control over. Like you can't control what the housing market is doing. So you can just control your debt payoff, hope that it goes down and keep investing for retirement, saving um, in the stock market if you can, and hopefully it will go up over time, but it's not always going to do that. You just can't get too emotionally invested in that. So the last thing I have here is a little chart that shows our net worth changes from 2022 to 2023, basically. I do have net worth numbers going back to 2016, but I didn't do it quarterly or even monthly when I first started tracking it. It was very sporadic. So I feel like um, it would be very hard to make an accurate chart off of those numbers. So I just did it from 2022 where I have like consistent um, net worth recordings. So in 2022, you can see we started here at $219,555. That was the end of 2021, start of 2022. And now we've gone up to $433,550. So I will say, again, if you're tracking your net worth for the first time and you are unhappy with the number, once you become a positive in your net worth, it starts to grow faster. It's harder to get from a negative net worth to a positive net worth than it is from, you know, a zero net worth to a positive net worth. Like it's so hard when you're in the negatives, but don't give up. It'll keep um, getting better over time. And then once you hit the positives, it starts going faster. And then once you hit a hundred thousand, I feel like it goes really fast after that. So just do what you know you're supposed to be doing, pay off your debt, save, invest, um, do the best you can on all of those things and it will improve over time. You just have to be patient with it. So that is all that I have for you guys today. I felt like this was really fun since I haven't done this in a while, but I'm also a nerd. So maybe it wasn't that fun for you guys, but I hope you did enjoy it. I enjoyed it. So thank you for watching. I appreciate you being here and I will see you in the next one. Bye.